I was surprised to find out that the top visited page on our website, aside from the attorney bios, is a mail away closings. So let's dive into all of the commonly asked questions about mail away closings. So first of all, when do you use a mail-away closing? And this is when a party cannot physically attend the closing appointment at the settlement agent or the closing attorney's office. And this could be for reasons like travel, illness, whatever it may be, but for whatever reason, they cannot physically get to the office. So what do we do? We mail the documents away and then they mail them back. That's why it's called a mail-away closing. The next thing that we get asked about mail away closings is, do I still need a notary? And the answer is a resounding yes for those closings in North Carolina. Whenever you're doing a mail away closing, you still have to observe the legal requirements of the state that you are buying property in and whatever the lender's requirements are. So lenders are going to have documents that need to be notarized, like the deed of trust and others. Or if you're a seller, the deed has to be notarized in North Carolina. I think it has to be in every state, but I know for sure it has to be notarized. So you have to think about, all right, I'm buying property in North Carolina. I may be physically sitting in California or New York right now, but it doesn't really matter what California or New York will allow me to do for my real estate closing because I'm not buying real estate here. I'm buying real estate in North Carolina. So often we'll have people say, well, in Texas, I can do an e-notary. That is awesome, but in North Carolina, that legislation has not been fully enacted yet. So we still require ink signature, ink notarization in order to be recorded. The other option is that you could be physically present with an e-notary and e-sign and e-notarize the documents, but your lender has to allow that. And quite frankly, there's not many lenders that allow it. We have not done a single fully electronic closing in the eight years I have been here. So most likely you're going to be required to ink sign and ink notarize those documents, which means they're going to have to be physically signed and sent back to us. The other common thing that we're asked is, does the timeline change for a mail away? Most of the time in North Carolina, you can sign, record, and fund a closing in the same day, unless there are other circumstances that push it to the next day or whatever it may be. But we're often seeing that all of those things happen on the day you sign. But with a mail away, that is not always possible. In fact, most often you are not going to be the owner of the property on the same day that you sign your documents. Now for a seller, you can sign your documents any time before recording. There's no particular day that you have to sign your documents on. As long as you sign your closing documents and they get to the closing attorney before recording, then you are fine. But if you are a buyer who is getting a loan, you have very specific rules you have to follow about when you sign your documents. You have to sign your loan documents on the day the loan documents are dated. You cannot sign them the day before. You cannot sign them the day after. You cannot sign them any day except for the day the loan documents are dated. So for example, in our office, if we overnight you loan documents, you receive them Thursday night, but your closing is supposed to be dated on Friday. If you sign them and notarize them on Thursday night, we will not be able to use those and your lender won't accept them. So then we've run into an issue. You have to re-execute the documents on Friday and have them notarized on Friday. Now, the other thing is that often means we are not able to record the same day that you sign your loan documents because we're not gonna get the documents back the same day. Because if we could, you most likely would be signing in our office. So you'll overnight the documents back to us once we have all of the loan documents, we have all the money and all of those things, then we're able to record. So you'll see that that's gonna push the recording date to the day after the loan documents are signed at best. That's if we receive the documents the next business day. Of course, if your documents get lost or delayed, then you know we're looking at the lender saying, do we have to re-execute the loan package? Will you allow us to use this one when we receive it? Lots of things can go awry if the documents don't arrive the very next business day. So what are some of the common pitfalls of a mail away closing? Well, the first is that if the client insists on printing their own documents, we typically like to handle getting the document package printed and tagged and sent out with instructions of what to do. But if there is a scenario where the client needs to print the documents themselves and get them notarized, what we often see are the documents are printed incorrectly. So they may be printed double-sided 
and a lender can refuse those and their register of deeds won't accept double-sided documents for recording. So that's an issue. And then we've also seen issues with formatting. So say a document is supposed to be on legal size paper and it's printed on letter and half of the page is cut off or the printer starts to run out of ink and the words fade and you can't read everything on the page, but they still trudge forward and sign it and send it back. And the lender says, we can't read this. We don't know what this says. That's not what we sent you. And then we also have the much higher incidence of missed signatures and missed notarizations. And this is a heartbreaker because say someone signs their package and they don't scan it back to us to look at before they send us the package back, we have lost the opportunity to make sure it's done correctly. So we'll receive the package and it's missing a signature on the note or a deed of trust or really any document. And then we got a problem because the documents have to be fully executed for us to be able to move forward. Same thing on the notarization. If your notary misses stamping something, they did everything else, but they forgot to stamp, they didn't notarize it. So we have to send it back and redo it. So that means that you're delaying your closing even further because of things that we try to catch in office when you're here, or if we had the opportunity to get everything tagged for you, you're less likely to miss that. So we impress upon folks that are doing mail aways scan us the document package before you put it in the envelope back to us so that we can make sure everything is good to go. So as you can see, mail away is, it definitely has its place. It is useful for those scenarios where a person cannot be physically present at the closing appointment, but you have to be very careful of the timeline and then making sure all of the documents are executed exactly correctly so that we can close as soon as we can.